Welcome to the Lounge Lizards podcast. So good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo, and tonight I'm joined for a holiday episode by Rooster, Senator, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some scotch, talk about life, and of course, have a few laughs. So take this as yet another invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a Cuban cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We'll also discuss holiday meals and Bam's history of cooking questionable bolognese, among a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we smoke the Italian regional edition, Punch Mantua. So a beautiful uh, Italian regional Cuban cigar tonight from Punch, uh, provided so kindly by Rooster. So tell us a little bit about the Punch Mantua. Well, first of all, I'm expecting a Venmo from all of you guys. <laughs> okay. I deleted Venmo. <laughs> so this cigar is called the Punch Manitua. It's, it's a thin stick. It's a Panatella, 6-inch by 38 ring gauge. Pigtailed Panatella, known as the Laguito Number no. 2 in Cuban cigar factories. It shares, a, shares its dimensions with regular production cigars as the Cohiba Corona Especial and the Monte Cristo Especial Number no. 2. And you guys mentioned that on a previous podcast. When we did the... Uh 1935, we talked a little bit about mm. that cigar. I didn't realize it was this thin, though. Yeah. I knew the Cohiba was, but I didn't realize this was the same dimensions as that, Monty. Yeah. I think the size-wise, it's the same as the LGC MDO number four, right? No. I th- 38? I thought no, the I've... MDO was a little thinner than this. And Maybe small, it's a 36. And shorter. And it's shorter. a 36. This is 38. Yeah. So the Punch Manitua was named after a city in Pinar del Rio in the western province of Cuba, known for growing tobacco. The Manitua was founded by a shipwrecked group of Italian sailors, hence the historical connection to Italy. And only 2,500 box of the boxes of the Punch Manitua are being released. How many of them do you think Rooster has? <laughs> I have one. 2,400. <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible. So it's just a little background on these on these well, sticks. I, I got to tell you, you know, we've we've talked about sticks to shape before. I know, you know, I'm I'm a sucker for a small ring gauge. Certainly, as I've fallen in love with the Fundadoras and some of the other thinner cigars, I I love. That's a beautiful cigar. A cigar this thin. Yeah, it looks. I wonderful. really do. I really do. And this is like we said, it's a special cigar for the holiday. It's it's really wonderful. What do you so? What are you guys getting on the nose? It's it's very fla- uh, fragrant for how small yeah, it is. Yeah, very aromatic. Yeah, yeah. I it feel is. like a number of spices I'm getting that mm. I can't place. I feel like if Grinder were here, he would be able to pick these out, whether it's cardamom or saffron or whatever White the hell pepper, I'm getting. pepper, maybe? Getting some petrochor. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting any petrochor? I love when Pooba, by the way, not to call back and, you know, but when <laughs> Pooba goes, nobody has any fucking idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, my God, it killed me. Killed me. This is a, a great little stick. I love the pigtail on it too. I do too. Um, but it smells great on the nose. Mm-hmm. Very, a very, like, very fragrant, but not specific. I can't. Little floral. I can't pick little any, floral. Any floral notes? A little bit. Are these aged, Rooster? Do you know? No, this is uh, 2019. Okay, so it's not like on a hot tobacco. It hasn't been out that long. So. Okay. All right, let's cut it, boys. The Punch Mantua, Italian regional. Limited to 2,500 boxes. They come in a 50, uh, 50 cabinet selection box. Tight on the draw. You have a tight draw? Fit. Let me snip now. I'll tell you in a second. Mine's got a perfect draw. Oh, boy. I only cut the, the pigtail. Hmm. Yeah, Did mine's you... a little tight. Mine's a bit, a bit. When it lights, it might be okay. Yeah, we'll see. Bastards. I'm getting a very faint floral uh, note on the draw. On a cold draw. Cold draw, now I'm getting like baking spice. I'm just amazed for this little cigar, just on the nose and the cold draw, it just seems like it's bursting with flavor. I can't wait to light this. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly a misconception I had as an amateur smoker was that the smaller cigars were less fa- flavorful and, you know, the smaller they got, the less there was. And I, I feel like that's, it's a, 
the exact opposite. You know, certainly once we had that Robania from 11. Getting a yeah. little last minute reading in here. It's known for, as a medium bodied cigar. Okay. You guys ready to light it up? Yeah, let's do it. The Punch Mantua. 2019. Gizmo, how's your draw? It's, it's a little snug. More snug than I would like, certainly. Me too. But we drew the short straws. The other two nailed it. Yeah, this one is perfect. Same. Good My draw. draw is excellent. Very nice. Oh, very, very nice. Velvety. Very yeah. smooth. Velvety. Velvety. You're right. Yeah. Rich smoke. Creamy. Coat your mouth. Mmm. But I, I would say it's medium body. I would say so, but still a good amount of flavor. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. We just lit it, so it's gonna build. Yeah, it's really nice. I think. I hope. Are you getting a little spice on the finish? I feel like my taste buds are. Dancing a little bit. Wow, the smoke is really yeah, lovely. There is a little bit of spice. Mm. Mm. A little coffee bean. I don't know, espresso beans, like dark black coffee. This is like a great cigar after like a little Christmas meal, mid afternoon. It's unlike anything we have had. Yeah, it's different. It right? is. It is because I'm I'm actually struggling to pick out the exact <laughs> flavor notes I'm getting from it. I, I like what I'm experiencing. Yeah, I know it's true, but it's, it's like really it's like floral, a me... little bit of spice, little espresso beans, little uh, you know, smooth, velvety, like you said, mm. creamy. It's a very good cigar. Very complex. Yeah. And from 2019, you can imagine if these sit for like five years, what they're gonna be like. So what you paid, you're, uh, you're vindicated. <laughs> it's expensive. a 50 cab. So these average out somewhere between, what, 28 and 35 a stick? Yeah, about that. Which is a high price for uh, a cigar this size, but obviously it's a, uh, it's a regional and rare. But um, this is very delicious. So it comes, it has, the, uh, it has a really nice punch band on it you know, uh, closer to the head of the cigar. And then it has the uh, Exclusivo Italia uh, regional band on it, the red and silver. This punch band, is this an old band that they used to use? Because it's certainly not the current one. I was going to say that. I don't know if it's special for this or if they've used it in the past. But it seems fancy. I mean... It it, looks great. It looks really nice. I almost wish they still used it. Yeah, it's like black and gold. Really, really nice. Wow, the aroma of the smoke. It's awesome. When you puff on this cigar, it is so is good. Unbelievable. It really is. And, you know, we've talked about this before with smaller ring gauges, but, you know, you really need to be patient in between draws with this. You can't, you can't blow through something yeah, this small. Yeah, you got to take your time with this. Yeah, because you'll really. So you'll this really is, it's a it vintage up. band. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. So, Rooster, what other stuff from Punch have you had and do you enjoy? I know we've all had the Punch Punch, which is there. What would you call that? A Corona? A super Corona, maybe? Yeah. It's a little longer than a Corona. Yeah. Yeah, the Punch Punch is the most I've had from the Punch marker. What else have I had? I've had a couple of regionals that are okay. Uh, there's a Punch Duke. I think that's a Mexican regional. That's that's pretty good. It's a, it's a bigger ring gauge, kind of like an Upman uh, 54, 56 ring gauge. Very good. I, also, the smoke output... For a cigar of this size, really impressive. And it just coats the inside of your mouth, I feel like. When you draw this cigar, you get all the flavor. I'm going to say something crazy, and you can tell me if this is bonkers. But I'm getting like a, I'm getting a vibe between Fundadoras 898 and Robania, the Vegas Robania Classico. Like if it's like, it's like the, if there's a little touch of all three of those in there. I don't this. think you're wrong. And they're all, it's all the best That's of those fair. Three. I think very fair. I agree. You know, this is really quite an elegant cigar, and it's true. You got to take your time with this. You do. You can't. Yeah. You because can't rush this. Oh yeah. To, to build on what you're saying there, Giz, I feel like it has the elegance and grace of a fundy. It has some of the flavor that the eight nine eight brings, and it has some of that creamy finesse that the Robania has. 
So I actually love your comparison of it's got a little bit of all three of those because I can definitely see different elements within this cigar. You know, you two guys belong at a podcast. You'd do great. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you put this in front of me with no band on it, like if this was a blind, all day I would have said that this was a Partagas of some sort. I would have guessed I think that I would this have. is a, a, an aged fundy, actually, if okay. it was blind. Okay. Yeah, I think what Senator said earlier, it's hard to place this cigar. It's true. I, I don't, just, just because of the shape. Well, I'm just getting some Partagas kind of flavors. I guess that's why I went to the 898 call out. You know, the Fundy definitely in its elegance and, you know, but it has some of that flavor as well. But I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards I'd lead, Partagas. I'd lean more toward the Fundy on this yeah. one for me. Okay. Are you guys getting any like, it's like rich, toasty tobacco? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. You know, black, here's my question. Black pepper. Let me ask you a question on the flavor notes for a second. It drives me bonkers when they put tobacco as a flavor note. <laughs> Angry. What is tobacco? Like, what, what, that doesn't help me. It's toasty tobacco. <laughs> it's a pack. What, of, what does that mean? <laughs> it's a pack of camels. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I never understood that. Well, that. I'm I'm reading something off of Friends of Habanas, right? So the first third from these guys, apparently experts, rich toasty tobacco, barbecue char, good draw, black pepper, burn askew, espresso grounds, cedar, burnt almond. Spicy on the tongue like cayenne, but smoother. Water. Does water have taste? Great. That's a great. This is ridiculous. Chalky, <laughs> salty. I'm draw. calling bullshit right now. Absolutely. Toasted nuts. I will say on the water note, this is going to sound stupid as well. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're getting water notes? No, 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 no. I do get a weird kind of water to taste sometimes when I'm smoking my Mag 46s. It's like a like a... It's almost you could taste the water that they watered the plant with. Magnum 46? Yeah, the Magnum 46. I get that sometimes. Can I take you out back and flog you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say Petrichor. Okay. Want, water has no taste. Right. No, but you I want to know like, what you're smoking with that Mag 46. No, you, you know, you get like, like if you have city water, it has like a taste to it. You know, like I, northern, northern yeah, Jersey like, water. Like, <laughs> like, like county. Yeah, city water has metallic notes in it. Okay. Right. Okay. And, and chlorine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I do get that sometimes, but it's certainly not in this right now. And he mentioned, uh, whoever that was mentioned cayenne pepper. I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting any of that. It's not, well, so I, I got a little the, bit. I guess the pepper, like the spice. That's the thing. When, when we started, I said I was, I asked if anyone was getting spice. I, I just, my taste buds were tingling from like a pepper and I could see even like a little bit of cayenne pepper. But as I'm going through this, that has pulled back, and now I'm getting sweeter, creamier notes as I'm, I'm going I'm along. I'm definitely in a sweeter, creamier camp. Yeah. I it's am, though. A little on bit. the finish, I am getting sweet. a hint of maybe a light pepper, white pepper maybe, which I love. Right. It gives it a nice complexity. So Very nice. All of you guys did a straight cut, and I just pinched off the pigtail, mm -hmm. and the draw is perfect, even with that little tiny hole. Sure. I took very little, very little off the... Right. I took very little originally. And it was very What was the last cigar that more. we had a pigtail on in here? Uh, uh, the, the oh, Dominicana. The, uh, uh, yeah, the Davidoff so Dominicana. I, I had pinched a off the skin on that and the draw on that was fabulous. Yeah. I think from cigar to cigar, you, you'll have a different draw. I got to imagine these are hard to roll, man. There's a lot of tobacco in these little things. One little twist of the hand. I mean, you know. Actually, I, there's probably isn't a lot of tobacco, right? I mean, that's just... I'm saying relative to its maybe size. Maybe one or two leaves like rolled, I would think. You know, Sorry. Rooster, I don't care what you paid for these. I think they're worth every dollar. It's a luxury cigar. Very luxurious. You said it beautifully elegant. The Trinidad Fundadoras, also worth every dollar you pay for it because of the shape and how it feels. This is very reminiscent of that. So you'll worth, get a free box worth when every you buy dollar. my Remington? Comes with a box of the man tours. What's the used <laughs> price on the Remington? Four hundred dollars, like you said. Done. Okay. Just add a, add two zeros. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming back to this again, but the combustion on this cigar. Mm -hmm. So I've had a long week. Oh, this is you and I both. I mean, the holidays are a stressful time, and I I'm still, if I'm being completely honest, I'm growing to appreciate smaller ring gauge cigars. But I can't honestly say I'm yet there where I wake up on a Saturday morning and I crave a small ring gauge cigar. I'm not there yet. And after the week I've had, I wanted to light up a big 60 ring gauge cigar that just produces clouds of smoke. And I'm stunned 
that this little ring gauge cigar is putting out as much smoke as it is. I'm so satisfied right now, and I it did is not impressive. expect this. It is impressive, no doubt. The flavor out of these little sticks is unbelievable. I think most of us were not into these little sticks, and more and more as we smoke a lot of Cuban cigars, and I'm very intrigued and very impressed by the 38, 36 ring gauges, you know, Panatellas, Lonsdales, Amazing. I have to give a crazy guy in the cigar business credit because I think all of us, if not most of us, attended an event with San Parai at a lounge that we were at. Um, and the guy is a very polarizing figure in the cigar industry. If you look him up, uh, I think his name's Aaron, who, who runs San Parai. Um, he's all over YouTube. And he must have given us 10, 12 cigars to try that night. It was the most ridiculous thing because there's no way you can get through 10 or 12 cigars. You were taking a few puffs of each and just moving on to the next and plenty of sticks even went wasted, which was unfortunate. But one of the cigars he gave was this Carlotta. I still remember it. It was a small, thin cigar like this. And I was very skeptical because I just didn't smoke anything like that. That wasn't usually part of my rotation and I was so impressed with how much flavor that that wrapper puts off. And that was kind of the first inkling I got that, wow, these smaller ring gauge cigars can actually be extremely flavorful and really enjoyable. And I'm glad that Rooster and others have started to procure a lot of these smaller ring gauge cigars because I feel like I'm starting to, again, grow my appreciation for them. Right, right. Agreed. And my, you know, my experience with small ring gauge cigars was almost in the application that we're kind of intending to to put this bonus episode out which is short smoke you know you have 30 minutes you pull a partiga short you pull a padrone 35 you pull an upman half corona you know you're pulling short stuff small stuff out whereas this it's serving a greater purpose to me than those cigars do in flavor in elegance it's certainly going to meet the time requirement that we're looking for i would be looking for in this setting but you know this is a really Really, really special little cigar, which is obviously why people are freaking out trying to find it everywhere. Right. You know, I mean, when was the last time you had a 2019 stick of this ring gauge with this kind of flavor? Now, I would say maybe a Fundador was like very close to that. We had a great uh, 2019 box. Yeah. Well, how old was that Maduro one that we, our very first episode, that was a 2018? 15. 15. 15? But that's right. a Robusto. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, uh, in this size. Yeah, that's a Robusto. Oh, true. I, in Never. A, in a Panatella or a no. Lonsdale. Yeah. To have something that young to get that kind of flavor out of it. So I think these will age beautifully. I'm also amazed that this is not a heavily aged box. Yet no, it's, it's 2019. So it's so smooth. Yeah. It, it I do wonder like an aged box. But I do wonder though if even if they don't announce it, I wonder if some of this tobacco was sitting around for a while aging and they, you know, But well, usually the regional sticks they do put some little, you know, a little bit of aged tobacco and it's also the better pick of the litter for a better word. Um for lack of a better word. But also the ELs when you get the limited editions uh limitadas those get a lot of, those get some age. The tobacco is definitely aged in those. So I think that that's, you know, this could be three or four more years than it, even the band has, you know, the, the box state has on it. But they're just pulling that tobacco out of the warehouses and, you know, wrapping it. But I got to say, I mean, if, if I've seen a lot of guys talking about the Cohibas from the last few years, that they really need more time. You yeah. know, that the guys are smoking the, the, the 19s, 20s, even the 18s, and they're saying they're 75% there. You know, they need a couple more years. So it is nice that, you know, you pick up a stick like this and it's ready to go. I love the um, bright white ash I'm getting here. Yeah, my ash is still holding on here. So it's Christmas time. I want to know, what are guys eating? What are guys drinking? What are, what are you usually having for Christmas? I'll tell you what I'm doing this year. I was telling you the other day, Senator, for the first time I'm going to make beef wellington. I got really turned on to it. There's a Gordon Ramsay video on YouTube of him making beef wellington and i've probably watched this video like a hundred times because it's just the most incredible thing watching this guy cook and um that's so, made in pastry yeah, it? yeah yeah it's like it's almost like a uh, like almost like a pie crust around a tenderloin and i don't know i'm a little scared of it 
senator told me not to be, but that's definitely what I'm doing. I told him not to be because I think um, Rooster and, and Bam will remember this. Grinder last year made a Beef Wellington for the first time and sent a photo to us, and it actually looked fantastic. It did. I, mean, I he remember. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a Jamaican meat patty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you having the roasted soy ball? <laughs> for Christmas, <laughs> what's on the rooster? vegan uh, <laughs> vegetarian menu, uh, Rooster? Oh, choices, limitless choices. Yeah. There's so many, so many choices. So for the holiday dinner, I don't know. There's so many. Like it's like it's like a Thanksgiving dinner. So only the turkey is the only meat, basically, right? I mean, all of your side dishes are basically vegetarian, which can be made vegan. So that's what we do. It's a lot of side dishes. And normally we get a holiday roast at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. And it's all, you know, stuffed with whatever, cranberry and all that good stuff. Not my, I'm not a huge fan of, fan of that, but I like the sides. I love the Leonese potatoes, the, the, you know, all the kind of green beans, asparagus. So it's all good. I like it. What are you doing, Senator? Are you going to do your big menu, print it out and everything? Yeah, there'll, there'll, be, there'll be a big menu. So, Dude, I, you, I, you are a masochist. Now you, yes, you are. You regretted masochist. that last, this past Th- meal. Thanksgiving, I was a little <laughs> overambitious. It, it all worked out, but boy, I was exhausted after. Uh, but Christmas, there, there's always sort of two staples. I love seafood, and I love a good steak. And so usually Christmas Eve is all seafood. I'm not even Italian, and I just love this whole like feast of however many fishes. We do that. We do that in my house. The seven fishes. I, I actually just I love it because it just forces me. I'll do like a seafood chiopino with a whole bunch of shrimp and clams and mussels and all kinds of stuff. Um, I may do some caviar to start. That counts as a fish. It comes from sturgeon, which is a fish. <laughs> um, so that that's usually Christmas Eve, a lot of seafood. And then Christmas Day, I'll almost always make a Chateaubriand, a nice roasted beef tenderloin, um, like a horseradish cream sauce. Um, it, it's it's delicious and a lot of wine. Yeah. Have you started tasting the wine for the holiday? Have you picked your wines out? I, I know uh, that's a whole process. I have. I, I I'm almost there. Okay. I'm almost there. <laughs> All right. Some well, of the listen, staples that you're we're, familiar with. We're glad. With will be we're there. glad to try any of that. You need to. <laughs> you need to start trying. We're ready to finish some bottles. Bam, bam. What are you doing for the holidays, food wise? I'm gonna attempt the rack of lamb. Nice. Oh. Yes. In the oven Love on it. the grill. What are you in the doing? oven? Okay. In the oven. Like yeah. Mint jelly. Uh, no mint. I'm not a fan of mint with lamb. Wow. I love the gamey flavor of of lamb. A little bit of it. If this comes out well, I want your recipe because if there's one thing that I'm actually a little bit intimidated to make, it's lamb, but I love a rack of lamb. So yeah. you have to share this. Yeah. So you do the, uh, the crown? Uh, we'll do the crown. I don't know, seven, eight sections. And it's uh, there's a bolognese, not a bolognese. Um, Hello. Oh, a red <laughs> wine. There's a red wine uh, recipe that I want to try. So I'll go through it. No fucking bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> I will never try to make that again. <laughs> All right, and we got to tell do, the story. If I do, gotta, I won't tell you fuckers. You got to tell the story. Go ahead. Just no pictures. No. So Fuck Bam, you. Bam was making bolognese one day. <laughs> and, Apparently uh, it wasn't bolognese. And he sent me a picture. So first of all, he said, he's, what did you start out with? Why did I bring this up? I mean, first of all, you know, you got to uh, start with the mirepoix. <laughs> Right. The mirepoix is basically the holy okay. Italian holy trinity. You start with the onions, the celery, and the carrots. Mm-hmm. But they have to be equally perfectly diced. And you, know, you criticized eat. my dicing. I know. Yeah, because they're going to they cook. Too big. They're going to cook. My hands not are at the fat. Same Look. Time. Bam took his but club to it instead of a knife. Yeah. That's but, exactly right. But you have, you have knives, stick. right? Are you, are you cutting it with your hand? I mean, you're using a knife. To I am using it. a knife. So use, yes. a, use a knife. So they got to be perfect. And then. The meats, you got to have, what did you have? It's got to be three. It's got to be beef. And pork, pork and veal. and veal. I didn't, I had beef and that was it. Bam Bam is well, so, so, de- it's so dejected right now. I am, I'm not happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a true bolognese. You know, I'm usually happy to provide comic relief, not now. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a running I'm joke sure for a long time. It I'm was, sure it tasted I liked it. Favorite, it was good. It, my favorite after that was there was some <laughs> Apple commercial that was on TV for a while where some guy is desperately trying to make bolognese in the kitchen and he's like throwing the sauce all over the walls in the kitchen and Rooster just texts all of us saying, there's Bam trying to make bolognese. I am actually a very clean cook. Very clean, very organized. 
Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so bolognese takes a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, you may, you're talking like three to four hours. What are we smoking next, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Smoke bolognese. You know, I, I will say, I was telling Senator the other day, one thing that's made my life a lot easier is the Traeger grill. I love that thing, the pellet grill. Oh, yeah. Grinder used that when he made the uh, brisket for us that one time. I want one of those. There, I'll tell you, man, there, and listen, I'm not a grill guy. Lizards out there, don't blast me for what I'm about to say, but I love that my grill connects to Wi-Fi. I can watch how many pellets are in it. I can sit on my ass and smoke a cigar and drink some scotch, and the meat is cooking. I don't have to worry about it. It tells me when the probe is done. I love it. And the stuff comes out perfectly every time. Yep. Every time. The turkey I did for Thanksgiving was unbelievable on the Traeger. Everyone I know that has done a turkey on that thing, it's come out beautifully. My mom freaked out when she tried that turkey. She's like, she's 76, best turkey she's ever had in her life. How many hours did you smoke it? Dude, I did it for... uh, I did it for two hours at 225 to get some smoke going. Then I did, I guess, another two, two and a half at like four something. Did you stuff it prior to with anything? Yeah, yeah. I got some stuff from Mrs. Gizmo. She made like a stuffing and stuff. I put it in there. Uh, oh, yeah? It was great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was nice. Wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, she's going to She's uh, gonna love that I just called her Mrs. Gizmo, by the way. Can you make gravy on it? You can make whatever you want. You can make pies on it. You can make you can veggies. Make soy chops on it. You make bolognese? Okay. Well, not bam. <laughs> Soy balls will yeah, work how, in there. How does tofu roast on the Traeger? <laughs> <laughs> back at your rooster. Say 10. So back to the stick. Yeah, back to the stick. It's still so good. For me, it's picking up in flavor. Me yeah, too. It is. Me mm-hmm. too. And, and the draw is actually opening up for me a little bit now. Me too. Versus where it was, bam. I know you guys are having, didn't have any challenges with it, but this cigar is phenomenal, boys. It is. It is. I'm really enjoying it. So Has it changed for you guys? It, what you mentioned earlier is starting to get me. The pepper note on the tongue, but smoother. Right at the tip, I'm getting. Same. It, it's quite nice. Exact same. Yeah, very nice. But now, I didn't get that on the initial first third. What I will say, though, the flavors, th- this is not a three-act cigar. And I like that. And I'm maybe in the minority, or at least we're, we're kind of divided on whether we want a cigar to change its flavor profile a lot throughout, or we want consistency. And this cigar, for a Cuban, I'm actually very surprised because I feel like a lot of these higher-end Cubans, they can really shift and change and take you on this journey, which I know some of the lizards really love. But this has been very consistent. It's just built in strength as I'm smoking it. And just here and there, certain notes are becoming accentuated, but it's not changing fundamentally the profile of the, of the flavor profile of this cigar, which I really like. So would you guys uh, source these sticks? From you? No, not from me, but I'm just saying in general. The jury's still out for me, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it, it's just a high price, you know? It's a, it's a high price stick for what it is. It's really delicious. Um. So I'm the only lizard in the group that doesn't have a tower. It's true. It's coming. Once my tower, I know that. Once my tower arrives, I would probably buy these and keep them because they're so expensive and it's, and they're they're very special, right? Exclusive luxury cigar, and have these on a special occasion. Exactly. Yeah. So it comes in a cab. It's a fifty cab, right? right? So even if you have like five sticks in the whole year, mm-hmm. you're talking you'll have it for like ten years. Yeah. You know, it's a special stick. It's not, for, it's not an everyday stick. What I'm realizing, though, without a tower or a means of properly preserving them, it's not worth buying. Well, I, d- I don't know about that, man. I mean, there's plenty you can do in, in Tupperware mm. and whatnot. I'm I mean, not good enough personally to do that. Okay. Well, I'm really not. That's just a management issue. But there's yeah. plenty of lizards out there who are rocking as good or better humidity mm. situations You're and right. storage yeah. in really good Tupperware than even that we're doing. And, and I know I'm super you know, crazy about watching my humidity and stuff. I know, Mm -hmm. I I think Senator is too. I don't know. Rooster gave me the kitty litter back, so I don't know if he even cares about it, but um, (laughs) I don't care about the kitty litter, but yes, I do do maintain the RH. (laughs) No, but you know, I think that I I, I don't think that you need a tower to, to me, the tower is just convenient. And when you're standing there deciding what you're going to smoke for the day or the week, it just makes it a lot easier than digging through tub. I'm I'm just jealous that I don't have a tower. It's easier to find stuff. I mean, it's right in front of you. Although I'm kind of having an issue because digging through boxes to see where the box is. But it's in front of you, right? It's vertical. As far as Tupperware is concerned, they're, you know, they're stacked up. You need to dig through the boxes. You don't know. 
unless you got to label, you know, what's in there. And uh, I don't know. The only, the only thing I experienced with Tupperware that I didn't like, and it was just because of mismanagement was, you know, when you have a, a sealed situation like that, that there's absolutely no air movement until that lid opens. Even if you have Bovida in there, they run hot. So if you have a 62 Bovida in a really tight Tupperware situation, it may actually be running in the 64, 65 range. To no fault of theirs, I mean, it is what it is since there's no air movement, but there's nowhere for it to escape. You know, even if you have Bovida, it's going to be a challenge. So that's what I like about the tower is it's kind of a perfect in between of a desktop humidor that leaks a little bit of humidity and a situation, you know, like a, like a Tupperware where you could see what's going on, but it's presented nicely in front of you. So I want to go back to the, 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 the cabinet. This comes in a 50 cab. Some of the best cigars in the world come in a 50 cabinet, 50 sticks in a nice, beautiful cedar sliding lid box. And my frustration at this point with a dress box, right? Those like cardboard boxes for the listener that are nice and colorful and all that. But I just feel like don't contain the flavors that the cigar puts out and sort of marinates in as it ages over time. It's incredibly frustrating. I wish every single cigar brand would only make cedar boxes. I don't care if it's a small little 10 box, a 50 cab, 25 but I just, my frustration, I, I, I feel like every cigar that I've had that comes out of, a, of, out of a dress box just doesn't smoke as impeccably as a box that's stored in cedar in a cabinet. Well, I think there's another component to that too, aside from aging and flavor. But I think it is that what I find with most of the 25 count boxes that, that come in the, uh, the dress box, as opposed to cedar or the 50 cab or even a 25 cab, or I got those Magnum 50s the other day. They're a little coffin, uh, cedar coffin of 10, three, four, and three, you know, uh, top to bottom. Really nice. The thing about the 25s that I've found in those dress boxes, let's compare. All right, so let's compare Lusitanias, Partagas Lusitanias. They come in a 25 dress box and they come in a 50 cabinet. You get that dress box of 25. Those things are stuffed in there so tightly. They're so tightly stuffed that there's no way that you're going to have perfect draw on all 25 of those cigars. It's just not physically possible. Where if you buy a Lusitania cabinet of 50 cigars in that cedar box, you gently pick it out, you slide the cigar out, every cigar is shaped perfectly. I think that's a major component too. Rass the same way, the Ramon Iones, uh, specially selected. You see so many guys that buy the dress boxes of those and pull them out. The 25s almost look box pressed. Where you buy the 50 cab and they're just a normal round robusto that stuffing them in a dress box is absolutely affecting your ability to smoke well do you need to let a cigar that comes out of a dress box sit longer i don't even know if it's about sitting i mean to me if you age either i think they're going to do better in a cedar but to me i think it's more a factor of you're stuffing too much stuff in in a in a in a, a casing that's too small and you're, the, the tobacco is drying and aging as it leaves the factory in not ideal conditions. I agree. At this point, just about anything I get in a dress box, I'd rather just take out and store loosely in my tower than I would keep them in there just super packed in. It, it just frustrates the hell out of me. I mean, I just I, I got a box of the H. Upman Anahados. And it's a very good cigar. I mean, I enjoyed it. That's why I've got two boxes of that now. I hate that it comes in a dress box. It really bothers and upsets me. They're packed in too tightly. The draw is not the same on every one of those cigars. It's a great smoke, but I feel like it'd be a whole lot better and a whole lot more consistent if they would just put it in a damn cedar box. And why are they putting an Anahados, which is right in between a regular production cigar and a Limitada or regional, whatever you want to call it, as far as price and and what the experience should be. Why are they putting that in a cardboard box? Why is Partagas shipping high-end uh, LCDH cigars in cardboard boxes? You know? Cardboard is for shipping, not for storing cigars. Exactly. Well, I, al I also want to say on cigar storage, all of us as lizards started with a desktop humidor. Every single lizard sitting here had a desktop humidor, eventually multiple desktop humidors, 
And then we all hit that sort of critical decision point where we don't have the space to store as many cigars as we'd like to purchase and, and age ourselves or just have on hand. And I remember going through this where I said, you know, what would probably be ideal for me is a coffee table size cabinet that I can store maybe 500 cigars in. And as I'm looking at this online and you see the price point for something like that, and then you look at these big floor to ceiling towers and the value for those is actually really, really good. And the thing that people don't realize is you're rationalizing, well, am I really going to spend that much for a tower? You're able to buy boxes of cigars when you find a good deal on whatever you like to smoke. It doesn't matter what it is, but when you find that deal, you're able to stock up and buy five, 10 boxes so that over the long run, I mean, I feel like we all enjoy the fact that the savings that we achieve by being able to buy in bulk and in quantity over time pays for the price that we spent on any of our tower humidors. Let me ask you a question. What cigar that we smoke since we've started smoking them has gone down in price to, right. re to replace them? The answer is none. They're all going bonkers in price. And also if you compare to, let's say, a nice desktop humidor, like a Danny Marshall. I mean, uh, you're talking like seven, eight hundred dollars for a nice humidor, right? That's going to hold like 100, 150 sticks. That's a rooster humidor. <laughs> well, I'm my, talking my, like my a desktop Danny Marshall. was not seven hundred dollars. <laughs> I know it was. An, it was probably an Ellie Blue, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine on cigar bid. <laughs> so I'm saying, you know, a decent, good desktop humidor will cost you that much, and you can go and buy a tower like Senator did. He was the first one to acquire the tower. And it was under around a thousand dollars with the with yeah. the Oasis, so and you can it holds how many two thousand, three thousand, three thousand sticks. So I don't think they're accurate with three thousand. I'd say it's probably closer to two thousand, but still a lot of three thousand petite Coronas and uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bam Bam, I think by episode what maybe by episode a hundred you'll have this sorted out. <laughs> He's getting it. It's coming. Well, Bam's, Bam's <laughs> going to ask Rooster and I probably a hundred more times for the link to the tower, and then uh, no, no, at no. That point, he'll, We've he'll got that in. covered. So I got a question for you. I am going to need some. I need to source a few pieces of equipment for you, from you guys. So equipment? I want that fan. Equipment. I'll make you a fan. I'll and the LED off. light. Oh yeah. Yes. I think you'll get the tower before you per, before you perfect the uh, bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I said I'm never making bolognese I'll take again. Over on that. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys getting in the the last third of this stick? You're gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm getting very slight. This is nuts. Almost maple, something it's in that category. A little bit of sweetness in that yeah. category. I'm getting a bit. I can see that. Mm. I'm getting a little bit of sweetness, and it was definitely a little more spicy than it was for me. Yeah, it's really picked up in strength. Oh, yeah. Like, this is getting it, borderline medium full. In a nice way, though. Totally. The flavors, like what we were getting in the beginning, it's like all of that, but more enhanced mm -hmm. and with a little bit of sweetness to it. Right. Right? Yep. Are you guys ready to give it the uh, formal lizard rating? I think so. All right. Rooster, Rooster you go Rooster, first. All right. I think this is uh, going to give it a nine. I think a few more years, this is a ten. But right now, it's a nine. I think for what this is, I'm absolutely in the same place, a nine. That's going to be three of us. I'm also giving this a nine. I'm right there with the three of you. It's a nine. All right, rookie score, 9.0. 9.0. You know, I, I, what's interesting is, and I know we're not, gonna, we're not supposed to compare, so I don't want to get yelled at, but I mean. Well, we have. Uh, I rated that um, the, the Maltese 1935 very very controversial for Puba that I gave it an eight. But to me, uh, this is this was way more enjoyable of an experience for me uh, for what it is. Uh, it's I, a different cigar. To me, but I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I understand that. But this hits me. I enjoyed this more than I did the Maltese. It was really quite a tasty cigar. I guess very, my, po my point, again, I, I'm not. What I'm saying is that I've enjoyed this stick more than I did that stick. I'm not. Th that's my only point in saying that with the yeah, nine. I mean, I I'm interested to hear why everyone gave this a nine. For me, this earned a nine because it's a very refined, complex smoke. 
the smoke sort of coats your mouth. You get some really nice flavor notes. There's just, it, it, it's a perfect, uh, you know, the, the holidays, I can, this is a perfect cigar after a nice meal, after a nice time you're spending with family and friends. And it just transports you, I feel like somewhere else, maybe to Italy where, where this cigar is, you know, the regional four. Um, so for those reasons, I, I found it really nice. The reason I didn't give it a 10 is I think to Rooster's point with age, it will be even more complex and even more interesting but it just piqued my interest and curiosity enough that for me, it's right at a nine. Agreed. Nine is an excellent score. I mean, yes. that's a great yeah, score. but it, it has the potential to, you know, once it ages, you put like three, four, five years on the stick. Will that I box remember. last three years in your humidor? Hell no. <laughs> Fucking A, it won't. No, in three years, he'll have a hundred more of those yeah. humidors smoke through. And he'll be living out of his car. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was a... He's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My wife might listen to this. <laughs> this was a very enjoyable might stick. Might be living in the Remington. <laughs> <laughs> or that might be my coffin. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Put it sideways. It's multi-purpose. It's there you go. Burn me down with those fucking sticks. End of life. <laughs> Plan. Love it. <laughs> Rooster, this was a great well, stick, man. Thank you happy for this. man. Oh, yeah. All right, boys. See you next time. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, lounge lizards pod, P-O-D, lounge lizards pod at gmail.com. I uh, really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>